When Moses complained about having a headache, what did God say to him? Take two tablets and call me in the morning. Hi, y'all. I want to talk about the tablets that the Ten Commandments were written on. What do you picture when you think of the Ten Commandments that Moses had? For me, I used to picture the ones that Charlton Heston has in the movie. But when you think about it, should we let Hollywood decide our pictures of biblical stories? The movie tablets are quite large and look like they would be heavy if they were made of stone. They're about the size of his torso, which would be awkward to carry. In this image, it looks like he barely has a hold on them. Those tablets are shaped like a tombstone, which is weird. Hey Moses, who died and made you king? I got to thinking about how big the tablets were after a discussion with some brothers. The Bible never tells us the dimensions of the tablets, but most of the tablets that archaeologists have found are small and would fit neatly in your hand. That would make sense both for reading and writing and storing and so forth. Now, I think the tablets would have had all the words in Exodus 20 from verse 2 to 17, the full text of the words God spoke out of heaven to the people at Mount Sinai. Most people forget the full text, but I've meditated on it a lot because I memorized these 10 words that God spoke. You can see me recite them from memory in our video on memorizing scripture. Now, most of the mock-ups I've seen of the Ten Commandments only have a summary, but some of the better ones have that full text. When I told my brothers that I'm starting to think the tablets could have been small, about hand-sized, Brother Jody said, wouldn't it be hard to get all those words on there? Then I reminded them that we know from the Bible the tablets were written on the front and the back. I have never seen a mock-up like that. So I decided myself to make a mock-up more like the tablets that the archaeologists find. Here they are, two tablets written on the front and on the back, and they fit neatly in your hand just like a, a smartphone. I also wanted to use an older alphabet, so for mine I used the pictorial proto sinaitic alphabet, even though that's not likely the one the commandments were written in. I just like the look of this ancient alphabet and the letters that still look like the things that they represent, and I wanted to learn how to read it. So maybe the tablets were small. We can't know for sure. But is there any advantage to smaller tablets? Yeah, I would think so. Those large tablets Charlton Heston has would have been heavy and awkward to carry. That means you're more likely to drop them, and if you did, they would almost certainly break. The Lord Jehovah has given unto you these 15... Oh. 10! 10, 10 commandments! Smaller tablets, on the other hand, would be easier to hold on to and more rigid, so they're likely to survive an accidental drop without breaking. Smaller tablets would be easier to store and carry. And from the book of Hebrews, we know that the two tablets were kept inside the Ark of the Covenant, but not by themselves. There was also a golden urn with manna and the staff of Aaron that budded. Since the inside of the Ark of the Covenant was not that large, about two feet by two feet and three and a half feet long, smaller tablets would make sense in there too. Now, large tablets would look good in a public display so people could read them, but remember, back then, literacy rates were probably low, and as I just told you, they weren't on public display, but inside the ark. Well, are there any Bible passages that might tip the scales one way or the other? There is one that I found. In Exodus 32, in the same place it says the tablets were written on the front and on the back, we're told Moses went down the mountain with the two tablets in his hand. The word hand in the Hebrew is singular. The two tablets were in his one hand. Then later the passage says he threw them or cast them from his hand or hands. If the text is saying he held both tablets in his one hand, they would have to be small. I don't think even Charlton Heston could have held those two large tablets in one hand if they were made of stone. And Moses was 80 years old. Of course, this phrase, in his hand, might just be an expression meaning he had them in his possession. So ultimately, we can't know how large the tablets were, but I got to thinking about it and researching it, and I figured some of you might enjoy hearing my musings on the issue. By the way, if you Google how big were the tablets, it might tell you 9 inches by 18 inches. This measurement is based on a tradition among the Jews. Unfortunately, a lot of those traditions are made up and we can't know which ones are or aren't, so we can't use this to decide the issue. 
Even so, those dimensions are smaller than what Charlton Heston had. Now, will we ever know? I'd say probably not, unless some Indiana Jones person finds the Ark with the tablets inside and intact, we won't know, at least not in this life. But God tells us not to seek after the Ark of the Covenant. It shall not come to mind or be remembered or missed. It shall not be made again. We don't need a little wooden box because we have Jesus now. The Ark of the Covenant was a symbol of God's throne and his sovereignty. Now the risen Christ shares that throne with him, and the symbol is no longer needed. The throne of God and the Lamb is now in the church, the body of all believers. We are the temple of the living God, and Jesus, the King of kings, has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. When you have Jesus, you won't miss the ark or the temple. A greater than the temple is here. So while we are no longer under the law nor under the Ten Commandments, the giving of the two tablets of commandments is a very important event in history that shapes our understanding of Jesus, who he is and what he did, and they've been foundational to Western culture. So it's a very worthwhile study. I pray this video has blessed you in some way. Thanks for watching and God bless you all.